Hello and welcome to Apocalyptic. Today we are going to be talking about every single thing that I use for packaging my orders. These things definitely shift and change a lot when I need to reorder things. I'll often like kind of reevaluate my options, but this is going to be everything that I'm using at the moment and most of the stuff I've been using for a little while at this point and I'm pretty happy with it. And if you aren't familiar, I sell prints, stickers, as well as like pins, magnets, keychains, small stuff like that. So it's gonna be based around those types of items. So for a little bit of organization, we're gonna be going from like the outside in and also kind of going from smallest to largest for everything. So let's jump right in. So if someone orders just stickers, I will send them as letter mail in these little pastel envelopes. It can really be any letter envelopes and I got these ones off of Amazon. I try to avoid Amazon when I can, but some stuff I end up getting there because of prices or ease of availability or stuff like that. But generally I do try to go to like different small businesses, stuff like that, just to not support Amazon. But sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. So if an order consists of just five by seven or four by six prints and or stickers, I will also send those as letter mail. I always have the option available to upgrade to track shipping, but I really like having this as an option, especially for international customers because international letters are only like a dollar to ship, but then the parcels jump up to like $15. So I really like to have that available. For all of those, I really like these six by nine inch envelopes that I actually get at Michael's. They're like super sturdy and they're craft and they're just like my favorite option for this. Next we have my most common envelope, which is a six by nine padded mailer. I recently switched over to these from using bubble mailers because I'm trying to use more eco-friendly options whenever I can and especially since I've started using like such a large quantity of this type of envelope it was kind of important to me to switch over so these I get from Uline and they are entirely made of paper with no plastic inside and they are really nice and sturdy. I also have the same option of envelopes in the 11 by 13 inch size so that whenever anyone orders a large print and three dimensional items, I use those. A few months ago, the brand No Issue reached out to me and they offered to send me some of their rigid mailers. So I also have some of those and I use those for just large prints. And they are made of corrugated cardboard and they're really nice and sturdy and I would totally recommend them. So on all of these, you might have also noticed I use a custom stamp. That's kind of a recent addition that I got. I really wanted to get one just to kind of jazz up the brown mailers a little bit. And mine is from rubberstamps.net. I'm not gonna lie, it turned out like a little smaller than I expected because I didn't see when it said like the size you could do and then the like, actual printable size it ends up being kind of pretty small I don't know where people get like bigger self inking stamps really because I haven't been able to find that much on the outside of my packages I also like to include a little thank you sticker and I make these myself using my thermal printer so that I don't have to use any ink my thermal printer is actually right there and it's from Munbin and I really like it I use it to print onto these little rectangular stickers that I got off of Amazon. They were a really good price and it was like a huge roll and I have been enjoying them so far. Lastly for the outside portion is just the shipping labels. So like I said, I use my Munbin thermal printer and just any shipping labels that I find on Amazon. I've been using a roll and I got a little roll holder on Amazon as well and it works great. I purchase all of my shipping labels through Etsy if the order is from there, but if it's from my website or something like that, then I use the website Pirate Ship. You can also create them using PayPal if you have a PayPal business account, but it is cheaper through Pirate Ship, and I really like that they don't require you to pay a monthly fee on like some other uh, shipping websites that you can find. So now we can go on to the inside. So I'll start with the sleeves for prints. I've been in the process of switching to glassine rather than uh, cello sleeves, like I said. Just kind of transitioning into more eco-friendly packaging wherever I can. A few months ago, I ended up having to buy a bunch of plastic sleeves because I didn't really know what a better way to do it would be for doing like in-person tables. Just couldn't really find like 
what would be a good option for that? I think some people will do like, you can like look through all of the prints, but I have like 25 different print options. So I bought some a while ago and I still have some left over from that. A lot of them I've used up, but I have five by seven inch glassine sleeves right now. Since that's my most common size, I already used up all the clear ones and I bought these off of Uline. And I actually just recently went in and purchased like a giant box of a thousand. So now I'm gonna have those for a while, which is good. <laughs> for larger prints for glassine sleeves, I actually haven't been able to find anything that's either like not super expensive per unit or is like a huge box of a thousand for like $80, which is kind of steep for me right now. So I have unfortunately been using plastic. I also tried to purchase these ones off of Amazon. I didn't see anywhere on the listing if it actually fit eight and a half by 11 inch stuff. So I was like, I'm gonna take a risk and like see if it does. And it doesn't. <laughs> so I'm kind of sad about that. They're like just slightly too small to fit anything eight and a half by 11 inside of them. I'll still end up using them at some point. I have like eight by 10 inch originals and stuff like that. So I'll use them at some point, but they don't work for that. So we have to just still go with the plastic for the moment, but maybe eventually I'll buy that $80 box. So for all of my backings, I get them off of clearbags.com. I get the three ply option and I love them. They're like really, really thick and rigid. They don't bend a lot and they're also white, which is like a small detail, but I think it looks so much nicer than having to use like the brown ones. And I very much recommend getting backings off of there. At one point I did have to, when I had to buy the uh, clear bags for the in-person event, I also bought like a bunch of brown backing so I do have some brown backings but that is how I found out for sure that the ones that you find on Amazon unless you know a lot about like how to decipher the weight and whatnot like I can't keep track of that they're honestly really like thin and they like bend a lot compared to the three ply ones that you can get off of clear bags and they're also like a really good price per unit so yeah the next section is miscellaneous some other things I just use here and there in the packaging I have these little brown sleeves that I originally bought to give to people at in-person events if they got like little stickers and stuff, but I ended up integrating them into my packaging and uh, I can stamp on them really well, unlike the tiny glassine sleeves that I have that we're about to talk about. So I kind of enjoy those. I've been often putting like post-it notes inside uh, and these ones were just from Amazon. I just realized I called them post-it notes and I'm not supposed to do that because they're not post-it. They're sticky notes, but for some reason in my brain, sticky notes are post-it notes. So I always do that. So then I have these small glassine sleeves that I got from Clear Bags. Uh, I've been liking to put enamel pins in them lately and I think that works really well for that. Whenever anyone gets a larger amount of pins or sometimes I'll use it for like keychains and stuff, I will use little organza bags. I actually have them in two sizes because it was like the same price per unit, I think, and it just makes it a little bit easier to have something that kind of fits nicely. And I got these off of Amazon. Right now I have both of them in hot pink. Sometimes I'll get light pink, but I really like them. I think they're really pretty and they add a little bit of a nice presentation and they can also be reused for all sorts of things. And I think it's just kind of nice. Whenever people get more three-dimensional stuff, I will sometimes throw in a little pinch of confetti. I wanted to get something unobtrusive, so I have these little pink hearts and I'll just put in a little bit here and there. I get these off of Amazon and the bag always lasts me like a really long time. The very last thing on the list is business cards and thank you cards. I get mine from Vistprint. My business cards right now are the square option and I get the premium quality and I'm pretty happy with them. I think they're nice and sturdy. So the cards in my packaging at the exact moment are these ones that I got in a slightly smaller size. I think they were like 4.2 by five and a half or something. And then I cut them all in half, which took a million years. I don't recommend it. And I originally bought them in the smaller size because I was using four by six mailers to uh, package orders that were only pins, which was a lot of my orders. So I wanted something that would fit better into those envelopes but then I ended up switching to the 6x9 ones anyway so 
The next ones I'm gonna be using will be the full four by six size, which is nice. I'm gonna be going back to that, and I kind of prefer that anyway, and I definitely prefer not cutting the wall in half. It doesn't even really save you money because of the like steep price cuts on Vistaprint. I didn't do it to save money, I just thought it would be nicer, and then I ended up switching anyway. On the back of my business cards and thank you cards, I also always like to include a full artwork. I feel like it's really nice and it encourages people to keep your business cards and thank you cards around for a lot longer. So I definitely recommend doing that if you're going to be designing some cards. So the thank you cards in my packaging at this exact moment are these little ones. Those are the ones that I cut up. Before that, I was doing these and they all have a bunch of writing on the back. And in like maybe a few months or something, I'm gonna be switching to these. So these are the first ones I've done that have like a character on them. And my business cards look like this at the moment. And they will for a while because I got so many. So that is every single thing that I use. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that it was helpful for any purpose you might have been watching it for. Uh, I'm so sorry if I was out of focus at any point. I'm still kind of trying to figure out how to use my camera in the best way and it's kind of known for having autofocus issues. So hopefully it wasn't too bad if I was ever out of focus, but thank you so much. Uh, please leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it. It would help me out a lot. Leave a comment, let me know anything else you might want to see a video about. Uh, subscribe if you'd like to see more. All of my links will also be down below to my shop and all of my social medias and everything. And I hope you have a lovely day and rest of your week. Bye bye!